Hi, I'm Helen and this is my channel Helen Explains where I talk about books on the topics of anti-racism, intersectional feminism and politics and also books I just really like and highly recommend. In this video I'm going to be talking about the book Sabrina and Karina um, by the American author Kali Fajardo Anstein. This is a collection of 11 short stories and the characters are all um, Latinas of indigenous ancestry um, set in Colorado and uh, New Mexico. These stories came out of um, issues that Callie saw growing up um, in Colorado, um, such as sort of violence um, towards women, drugs and alcohol abuse, gentrification in Denver. All the characters um, in this collection were inspired by people in Callie's life. She was acutely aware sort of growing up that there was no indigenous Latinas sort of represented in American literature. So she, she wanted to write this collection in order to give to center these women and center their lives and let the world hear their voices. This collection is quite a dark sort of set of stories with themes of sort of death and violence running through them. But there's also some humour in there and fundamentally I think what really resonates for me is the connection of a family and um, a heritage. I rarely read short stories but I found these ones to be incredibly powerful. I think probably because of the, the sort of themes running through them and the fact that I've never read anything like it. Short stories don't have the luxury of sort of pages to, to really develop characters or, or give you a sense of setting. They have to get straight to the point and they have to jump straight into the action. And I really think this is uh, Callie has sort of captured that so well in all of these stories. In an interview, Callie said that the short story form is sort of one that's really closely um, related to oral storytelling, something that's very sort of prevalent in um, Indigenous cultures and one that Callie has grown up with. The 11 stories in Sabrina and Karina are just packed full of richness and it's a beautiful collection that really complement each other. Now, I'm singing this book's praises, but <laughs> you don't have to take my word for it because it has literally won awards. Um, it's the, being the National uh, Book Award finalist, which it says there on the front there, and was also the winner of the American Book Award. This year, Callie has also won an award from the American Academy of Arts and Letters, named as a sort of writer of great promise. She's got another book coming out in 2022, I think a novel, and I honestly can't wait to um, read what she's got coming up next. Now, I didn't pick up this book myself. I actually read it as part of the BIPOC Bookcase Book Club. Um, there's a lot of bees in there, uh, which is um, a monthly book club run by a woman called Liz, where we discuss and uh, read books by uh, BIPOC authors. Liz has just got a new website, so you should really check it out. I will link it in the description up below. And also join the club if you're looking for a new book club. Just as an aside, if you're unsure on the terminology of BIPOC, then uh, check out my video up there and also down in the description um, where I go into more detail and explain exactly what BIPOC means. The best thing about the session for Sabrina and Karina was the fact that Liz was able to get Callie to join us all the way from Denver, Colorado. Callie also told us that um, she had sort of quite a rocky start growing up. Um, she actually dropped out of high school and she said that she could have very easily become the Sabrina in the, so the title story, Sabrina and Karina. Luckily she didn't, but unfortunately there were so many girls that she saw growing up who did. In the title story, Sabrina and Karina, the character of Sabrina really goes off the rails. She gets into lots of drugs and alcohol, um, starts sleeping with loads of men, and eventually ends up killed, strangled to death. The story is told from the point of view of Sabrina's cousin, Karina. I looked to my mother and father, dazed and accepting, numb to everything. After some time, I heard my grandmother say to my auntie Josie, it's what she would have wanted. I thought of all the women my family had lost, the horrible things they'd witnessed, the acts they simply endured. Sabrina had become another face in a line of tragedies that stretched back generations. And soon, when the mood hit my grandmother just right, she'd sit at her kitchen table, a styrofoam cup of lemonade in her warped hand, and she'd tell the story of Sabrina Cordova. How men loved her too much, how little she loved herself, how in the end it killed her. The stories always ended the same, only different girls died. I didn't want to hear them anymore. No, I said, turning back to my grandmother before taking my seat. Sabrina didn't want any of this. She wanted to be valuable. It just shows that these women's deaths are so commonplace. It's something that they're really used to, they're numb to. It's uh, Sabrina, unfortunately, is now another face in a long line of tragedies. It's, it's not something new or shocking um, that has occurred in this family. Callie is, with these stories, honouring these women and honouring their lives and, um, and showing that their lives um, were, were important and were valuable despite being cut short so soon.
In the story Sisters, the character Doty was uh, based on Callie's great auntie who was actually shot and blinded by a man. The end of Sisters I think is particularly poignant where someone asked Doty, what happened to your eyes? I had an accident. Oh no, said the girl, scooting closer to Doty and squeezing her hand. I bet people say you're lucky it wasn't worse. As a matter of fact, said Doty, no one says anything about it at all. I wanted to read this section because Firstly, she refers to it as an accident when it was anything but. And secondly, the fact that she says no one says anything about it at all. This woman has been blinded that was supposedly an accident. And yet it's this unspoken violence that women are just putting up with and it is getting swept under the carpet. The story of Sisters, I think, is really interesting because um, like a lot of Callie's stories in uh, Sabrina and Karina, there's like an underlying narrative that also ties in really nicely or gives a bit of background to the main story. As quickly as the flies came, they fell from the cottonwood trees and sunshine elms. They littered lawns and gathered in gutters. Old men crept out from their houses and hosed them away. Lucia Barrera's face flowed down streams and into the sewers, where it disintegrated into nothing more than ink-laced dust. In time, her face was forgotten, leaving the bark as naked and twisted as it had ever been. And that is describing the flyers of the missing woman, Lucia, who amazingly was actually found in this novel. But so often, um, particularly in America, Native American women go missing and then are never found or they end up murdered. I think both incidents really, really reminded me of the social um, media campaign with the red handprint over um, her mouth. trying to highlight the the violence and the missing and murdered Native American and Indigenous women in America. It's described as an epidemic in the US as Native American and um, Indigenous women are 10 times more likely than American women to be murdered. Furthermore, it is also the third leading cause of death for Native American women. Even worse, for women under 44, it is the number one leading cause of death. Those statistics are just staggering and I think that Callie's story, particularly Sisters, really highlights the fact that missing there are missing women that happen all the time and they do, their faces flow down the streams, they just the flies get forgotten, they get swept away. It's just another woman. Callie's stories and the fact that her book is now being read sort of internationally really highlights the violence that the indigenous women go through. And I think it's so important that their stories are heard because they are so often swept under the carpet. I could talk about all 11 stories in this book. It, they are all so fantastic. I, I really loved Sugar Babies and also Galapago. But one that I just want to sort of finish on and finish talking about, probably my favourite one, is the last um, story um, in the collection, which is called Ghost Sickness. Ghost Sickness centres on the character of Anna, also her absent partner, Clifton, who we find out is sort of missing, and her history of the American West class that she is currently failing. In the story, Anna sort of really seems to grapple with her heritage and who she is, sort of describing herself um, when a classmate asks, are you from Colorado, like a Native American, as I don't know really, it's complicated. I know from an interview that Callie has said she personally has a very mixed heritage, so I kind of wonder, like, maybe Anna is based on Callie herself. The key moment in the story is when Anna is in her class and her teacher is describing ghost sickness, which is a culture-bound syndrome of the Navajo and other southwestern tribes. Taken out of its cultural context, the illness doesn't exist. Anna sort of takes notes in blue ink. Imagining illness, she writes, comes after abrupt slash violent death of a loved one, marked by loss of appetite, sense of fear, extreme cases, hallucinations. Despite writing it down that it's an imaginary illness, later Anna actually experiences this exact syndrome of ghost sickness. She experiences a loss of appetite and then an extreme vivid hallucination of her loved one Clifton it's sort of swerving off the road and driving into a canyon. The story ends with Anna's history exam, one that she knows that she's going to fail. That is until she turns the last page. The exam paper reads, for a full letter grade increase, in detail, describe the origin myth of the Navajo people. We flash back to a memory of Clifton lovingly telling Anna this exact story. It's a heartbreaking moment knowing that he, her loved one, is now dead, but poignant in the sense that he's passed on a story that will stay with her forever. 
I think the story Ghost Sickness really rounds off the collection in a beautiful way. Although it is incredibly sad, sort of heartbreakingly sad that Anna um, has now lost her loved one. It shows how important the tradition of oral, oral storytelling is in um, Native American uh, uh, culture and how even in modern day life, Indigenous people are so connected to their ancestry. Thanks so much for watching my video um, on Sabrina and Karina by Kali Fajardo Anstein. Um, I'd highly, highly recommend you read this book. It's a really beautiful collection of short stories and I guarantee it is nothing like you've ever read before.